Hi, my name is Michelle Depoy with Education Services. This video is one in a series of videos that describes how to use eVault products and features. In this video, I'll demonstrate the process of adding a Windows agent to Windows Central Control. Central Control is a user interface used to register the agent with a vault, configure and run backup jobs, perform restore operations, and view agent backup and restore log files. Central Control can manage one agent or hundreds of agents. Windows Central Control was pre-installed for this demonstration. The installer program placed a program shortcut named eVault Software Central Control on the Windows desktop. Double-click the program shortcut in order to open Windows Central Control. Central Control opens on the desktop. The Central Control window has two main panels, a Workspace panel on the left side and a Details panel on the right side. The Workspace panel is used to display a hierarchical list of objects being managed by Central Control. For example, an agent is an object. If an object is selected in this hierarchy, its details are displayed in the Details panel. The My Computer object is an agent that was added by the installation software. It is partially pre-configured to connect to an agent running on the Central Control system. If an agent is not installed on the Central Control system, the My Computer agent could be deleted. To add a new agent to the Workspace hierarchy, right-click Workspace and select New Agent. In order for Central Control to manage an agent, it must be able to connect and authenticate to the agent. You provide the connection and authentication information in this window. The best way to name an agent when adding it to Central Control is to use the hostname of the system where the agent is installed. If you use this method, it is very easy for any user to quickly determine which agent is installed on which system. In the description text box, I'll type FS01. The network address can be entered as an IP address, a host name, or fully qualified domain name. If you use a host name or fully qualified domain name, the operating system on the central control host must be able to resolve it to an IP address. It is preferable to use a fully qualified domain name in environments where the IP address might change. In the network address field, I'll enter FS01. For the port, agents use TCP2548 or TCP8021 for communication with central control. In general, the agent uses port 2548 to listen for connections from Windows Central Control, while 8021 is used to listen for connections from Web Central Control. If there are firewalls between the agent and central control, they should be open so that central control can initiate the connections. The default port numbers are only changed in those rare circumstances where another application is already configured to use the same port number. Under Authentication Information, in the Username text box, I'll type Administrator. The user that is specified here needs to be an existing member of either the Windows Administrators Group or Backup Operators Group. The user cannot be a normal local or domain user and must have backup privileges. In the password text box, I'll type the password for the user. In this demonstration, it is the administrator password. If you select the Save Password checkbox, you will not be interactively prompted to enter the password each time you select and manage this agent in Central Control. Next, I'll click Get Status. This tests Central Control's connection to the agent. If there are problems, an error message will appear. There were no problems in this demonstration, so I'll click OK to close the Agent Status window. Then click OK to add the agent to Central Control. Notice that the FS01 agent has been added beneath the workspace. The list of agents managed by Central Control is kept in a file on the Central Control host. The file is called a workspace file. Each time Central Control is started, it loads a workspace file that contains a list of managed agents. If you make changes to the list of agents in the workspace, you must save these changes to a workspace file or they will be lost. You may save different workspace files that contain different lists of agents. An agent may appear in two different workspace files. To save your changes, click File and then click Save Workspace. Thanks for watching. Be sure to view the next video in this series, Registering an Agent to the Vault. If you would like to learn more about using eVault products and features, be sure to view the growing number of technical demonstration videos available on our website.